recently uh, this uh, portable welder uh, was stripping the fuse and so I took it apart it's a Mitsushi uh, welding machine and uh, I bought this from Lazada for about less than 3000 so it's a portable welding machine it's not meant for uh, industrial use although uh, recently we've been using it constantly to uh, weld uh, a few things uh, so if you're in the Philippines and you have a farm you, you do need a, a welding machine uh, it is really important to have one otherwise you go to town and have everything welded together over there so uh, having a portable machine uh, is really convenient now having a bigger machine uh, you, you gotta have uh, your own transformer and you, you really have to watch out what kind of transformer you have you have to have a lot of KVAs even with 10 KVAs um, may not be enough if you if you plan on using uh, a heavy duty uh, welding machine uh, it really will suck a lot of current and uh, it'll impact your transformer so I disassembled it and uh, wanted to understand why it was stripping fuse. So I checked various components, uh, check all of the if there's any shorts uh, with the uh, with the bridge, with the SCRs or tie resistors. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any short at the bridge tie resistors. But there was a short at the capacitors. So I, I did notice that the capacitor were, uh, seems to have damage. Now these capacitors, uh, 450 volts DC rating, 680 microfarads. And so with the bridge uh, to filter the uh, ripples, and you have these uh, 3680 uh, microfarads in parallel so you would have you would have about uh, let's see 680 around 20,000 microfarad and they're high voltage with this kind of high current uh, EGBT uh, welding uh, when it's uh, rectifying to 20 volts the inrush current to the capacitor is huge uh, so it's not a surprise that the capacitor would begin to uh, would would the, the, its life their life would be shortened because of the uh, huge current spike that uh, would be present to charge the uh, these capacitors. So uh, I bought this in 2020, middle of 2020. So let's see, uh, it's, it doesn't it didn't even last two years. So if you buy these and you expect it to, la to last a lifetime, don't expect it to last a lifetime. Uh, these are regular, regular uh, capacitor grade. So we don't know what the uh, mean time between failure is for these. But I can say that it's very short, uh, not even two years. And. Uh, so, not, not a surprise that this would go bad. Here I'm measuring the resistance uh, on the capacitor leads. And it's reading 7.4. If there wasn't a short, these, the 7.3 uh, ohms would actually begin to rise uh, until, uh, until the capacitor are charged. And because the the capacity the the 7.2 is not at all moving up, uh, this means that there's a short to the, the to the capacitors. So I'm going to take the capacitors off and uh, actually find out which capacitor is shorted. Removing this kind of capacitor, uh, there's a lot of copper trays both sides. So this means it, it'll take a lot of heat to, uh, 
to remove the capacitor so I set my iron to uh, 480 degrees C or 800 let's say 900 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and using a large tip I could use a bigger tip I suppose I'll have to check using a large tip here the dwell time is going to be minutes uh, it's not going to be seconds because the heat transfer from this side to the other side will take a while it would be nice if I have a 100 watt uh, iron tip but this is all I got I really don't want to damage the tracks or the pads so uh, this will take this will take a while uh, gotta really be careful because uh, damaging these uh, pads uh, uh, it'll be hard to put the new ones in uh, later so uh, gotta do it carefully take time okay I took the first one out and I'm going to check the uh, the resistance of this capacitor and at the same time check whether this this uh, this is still shorted so uh, this is what you call process of elimination where is the find out where is the short so I'm measuring the, uh, the resistance of this capacitor as, uh, as I mentioned before it would be charging so this capacitor seems to be okay it's going up to 500,000 K uh, 500 K ohms so this doesn't seem to be the short So it looks like there's still a short somewhere, so it's not this capacitor. So we'll have to see which of the capacitor is uh, no good. So I removed the second one. Um, so I'm going to measure the, the, the resistance of this uh, second one. So the resistance of this is 12 ohms. So this appears to be the, uh, the capacitor that has the problem. So I'm going to measure the uh, the uh, circuit boards again so me measuring the circuit board I can see that the uh, resistance value is increasing that means that I've taken out the, uh, the bad component so there is a, another capacitor there I, I really need to replace because uh, uh, they work in parallel so if, if one is not good you might as well replace all three so I bought the three uh, capacitor from Lasada. So uh, once I have it, uh, I'll do another video on that. So I now have to clean the holes uh, because they're double sided and the copper trays are very thick or very wide. They act like heat sink. So uh, you really need to have hot iron to uh, clean them. Uh, that's a challenge with uh, this. It's a good thing it's not a four layer board, otherwise it'd be even more difficult to remove components. So this is the top layer uh, or component side. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm here, this, this is the plus side. So copper here and copper at the bottom. So hard to clean this kind of uh, uh, pads. It's really hard to uh, array, uh, desolder these pads, especially when the, the solder is on both sides. I'm going to remove this component and then clean all of the holes and then install the capacitor once it, uh, once it arrives from Lasada. And then I'm going to test it. So, uh, in short, these uh, I really don't know the quality of this uh, oh, actually it's Nippon Chemicon so in my previous life experience uh, we use this kind of components Nippon Chemicon and they're, they're pretty good it's a, it's a known brand and uh, now there, there are what you call commercial grade capacitors and there's just regular grades uh, 
and commercial OEM versus uh, regular the, their quality are uh, different of course so regular cheaper commercial more expensive uh, high temp that sort of thing so uh, when you're looking for or designing a, a circuit board design uh, and you want them to have MTBF of 15 years then you gotta look at the, the data sheet for all of these components. Uh, here, whoever designed this, uh, and they were, and they are selling this uh, product, uh, low cost. Then the components used are, are not the commercial type. So, it, in, in, in short, they don't have a, sh uh, a long life uh, under heavy load. So, that's that's the thing. Not surprised. So don't expect these to last years. Expect it to last months. Now they could last years if uh, their use are uh, usage are intermittent. But I'm using it here. It's, it's like uh, al almost like uh, a manufacturing company. So uh, I, I think we're almost done with that. So this once I repair this will be hardly used. Maybe. So. Here I was uh, here I was removing the last capacitors, and unfortunately I was impatient, and so when I removed this, it also lifted the pads. So that's a no that's a no no. Uh, really, uh, I was pulling while I'm heating the pads. I was pulling on the component, and of course. Uh, the, the solder joint is cold, so it lifted the pads here. Not good. As you can see, the uh, the pad lifted off, and you can see the bare uh, circuit board. So this this circuit board is an FR4 uh, circuit board. It's a good quality circuit board. So uh, now I have to clean these holes. Uh, that sucks. Not a good job. If you lift pads and you're doing this uh, kind of service, that's a bad job. So, uh, anyway, oh well. I really don't have a hot iron. If you have a hot iron, lifting this kind of components is uh, would be easy, trivial, you might say. So, uh, so that's unfortunate.